So now we have our final Sapphire Now keynote presentation from an icon in the IT industry. In 1972, Hasso Plotner and four colleagues left IBM to found SAP. In 1992, he accurately predicted and drove the rise of three-tier computing when skeptics thought that two-tier was enough. Since his retirement from SAP, Hasso founded the Hasso Plotner Institute at Potsdam and Stanford Universities, which are now at the forefront of software systems, design, and engineering. With his continuing groundbreaking research, Hasso is once again looking for the next big thing, and he believes that he's found it, and he's here to share it now. Ladies and gentlemen, Chairman of SAP Supervisory Board, Hasso Plotner. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thanks, Vishal, you basically said everything, so I can keep it short. Um, several times in the recent years, I talked about this oncoming innovation about um, in-memory computing and how we could use it. And I talked about the research we did at the University of Potsdam, transferring this um, in-memory database with a column store into an OLTP system. Um, a lot of people believe that's not possible. A lot of people, some experts say, have tried it and they failed. Prominent names were reported. You can find this on the internet. Um, we think not only it's possible, after Sapphire last year, as an advisor to SAP, I was able to convince the management team to make some bold decisions. We had three database teams, and probably two were about to be moved somewhere else, or three of them, um, because some people thought we shouldn't be in this business. And we put them together. I remember the day where I delivered a speech in Berlin to the MaxDB group and said, you are now part of a new group and we build a new database together. We know it works, we have prototypes, we have done a lot of stuff, but these are university prototypes, now you have to build a system. And they were surprised, but they were good sport. The team started, probably four weeks later, the team Berlin, Waldorf, Seoul, work together in an unbelievable fashion. It's not only a new database, and thanks to the team and thanks to Vishal and all the people involved, we probably have found a new way how to work together. We work on the database 24 hours. It starts in Seoul, continues in Shanghai, goes through Bangalore, comes to Berlin and nearly simultaneously to Waldorf, and then to Palo Alto, and then goes over to Seoul again. The, all the people involved are in permanent contact. I learned a few lessons, and I will start then about this when I got the opportunity to teach at Stanford in the design school or school of design thinking. <clears throat> one of the lessons Terry Winograd gave me, he is one of the professors at Stanford for human computer science, and he, he said, in modern companies, recent setup companies, there is per two developers, one communicator. We haven't reached that level, Jim and Bill, 
but the idea intrigued me. We have a communication management scheme set up in this database group, and this com communication management group is replacing classic project management. We permanently interact with each other. We document what we have done, what worked, and what didn't work. There's no blame, there's no, and there's no jubilation. There's just facts, facts, facts. And everybody has to read them. It's not management reporting and good news travel up and the bad news stay low. Everything is out in the open. So the whole team knows exactly where we are and where we go. They suffer together when we have a setback, and they enjoy together when we move forward. I think this gave us, despite this is a relatively large team, back the feeling of a startup company, where everybody sits together, there are a few tables and probably not even chairs, and then this is how we started SAP. The chairs were not that good um, because we got them from the scrapyard. And <laughs> when you have no money, you do funny things. Um, they, they have the feeling that this is one team, despite they are dispersed around the globe, they live in different time zones, but everybody knows, oh, somebody in Seoul got the SQL parser working. Tomorrow I can test it in Waldorf. That is exciting. I don't actually know anymore where the computers are. This is a different world. Communication on top of the project is everything. We basically develop in real time. I wanted to do this 18 or 15 years ago when I first came to Palo Alto. Idea was right, time was not. We didn't have broadband. We didn't probably have the spirit that this is possible in software. The automotive industry started first. The aircraft industry followed. They are working around the globe. We have shown now how this can work, and I hope we can extend this to other projects as well. Back to design thinking. There's this famous uh, chart, one of the first charts which the design thinking team at Stanford developed. And in order to, to describe how design thinking finds its orientation, they drew these three circles with desirability, viability, and feasibility. And that whatever we do in a product design, in development, we have to think simultaneously about these three things. This is true for user-centric systems. I believe it's fundamentally true for all systems, and especially it is true, for example, for a database system. The whole team has to think about this, has to know where we are as a team, and every team member has to know where he or she is in this development, and whether this is a contribution to feasibility, but also does it mean something for desirability or not? Am I just doing my little job here, spinning the wheel, or do I see that I make a contribution to the whole? As the next step, I want to go into desirability, viability, and feasibility and explain more about this. And then I felt the audience is a little bit thinned out already. Um, if I do more technology talk, it will probably be even less. So I did the opposite, and I put the result, the final result, at the beginning of the talk. Um, 